Looking through this year's videos, I realize it has been four to five months since we have reviewed a FDM or extrusion based 3D printer on this channel, which just seems crazy to me. Time has gone by so fast and the last couple of reviews we've done have been on resin based 3D printers. Now, that doesn't mean I haven't been testing out a couple of extrusion based printers behind the scenes because I have and I'm getting very close to finalizing a few other ones. So we are going to be finishing the year off with a couple of different reviews. Now the last 3D printer that we reviewed from Crowdy was back in March and that was the Ender 3 V2, which currently I still have. It's running great. I installed the BL Touch and I've got a couple of other upgrades uh, here that I'm actually going to be installing in a video very soon. Creality has released quite a few different printers this past year, and I've gotten a lot of requests over the last few months to check out their Ender 7, which is their Core XY 3D printer with linear rails. And for anyone that has asked or is interested, I did end up getting one of those in, and I am going to be testing it out for a review, so stay tuned for that. It will probably be at least another month or so before it gets released, but I am super excited based off of all of the feedback and, again, just inquiries I got for that printer. But that's not what we're here today for. Today we are going to be taking a look at or talking about the Creality Sermoon D1. Now way back in May, Creality reached out to me asking if I wanted to test out the D1 and after looking at it, I was definitely intrigued. It was certainly different than a lot of their other machines. I liked that it was nearly fully enclosed and it had a direct drive extruder, which is something that Creality doesn't really do all that often. I think it was their CR10 V3 that had that, but other than that, that's not really a normal thing for their 3D printers and I know that there is a lot of demand for that so I agreed and I have had this printer for quite a long time now so I've had plenty of time to go ahead and kind of probe it, take it apart, look at it, put together my opinions, do lots of printing and so today it is all going to be about the Creality Sermon D1. I'm just going to call it the D1 because that's kind of a long name, but we're going to go over the D1 specs. We're going to go over what the unboxing and setup was like. I will talk to you guys about, um, you know, the prints that I ran off of it and show you guys those prints so you can see the quality that I was able to get. And then after all that, I will give you my sort of final opinion on what my experience has been like with the D1. So there is an absolute ton to cover. And without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to Thanks for sponsoring today's video. With over 2 million index models in their database and growing regularly, Thanks finds the exact model that you're looking for. Thanks has some pretty unique features, like the ability to perform a geometric search or the recently added AR mode that I love. I'm a very visual person, and having the ability to place a 3D model in your space before actually printing it for reference can be quite useful. Also, it's a lot of fun and can make for some great photos. There are also great collaboration functionality baked right in, like the ability to create a private team for working on projects where you can keep track of things like different model versions as well as revisions. You also have the ability to follow a user's project, which is great for any that are actively being updated. Things has been developing new features for their site constantly, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this platform continue to expand. Links will be in the description so that you can find out more and check out things for yourself. Starting off like we normally do, let's first run through the specs of the D1. The D1 is constructed of beefy aluminum extrusions with curved sides, acrylic panels, as well as sheet metal, and it has a build volume of 280 by 260 by 310 millimeters. There is acrylic on the back, on the sides, and it has acrylic doors, but the top is completely open, and early on I reached out to Creality asking if or when they had plans on releasing a top for it so that way it can print ABS since it is nearly set for that, and they let me know that they didn't have any intention of releasing a top enclosure for this printer, which I was really disappointed with. I felt like it was sort of a missed opportunity. The printer weighs way more than I had anticipated at around 45 pounds, which is due to that thick aluminum. It is running a 32-bit Creality board, and I didn't see any mention of the specific drivers, and when I actually looked at the board, the heat sinks are sort of set in place with the heat sink glue stuff, and so based off of the sound of the machine being fairly quiet. I would say it's got some sort of either TMC 2208s or TMC 2209s, but again, I couldn't figure out the exact model on this board. It uses a direct drive extruder with a smaller stepper motor than on many of their other printers, which should really help with the added weight of having that direct drive. It is a single geared extruder and it also does not have an all metal hot end like many of their other printers. The bed is made of the same sort of black diamond glass ultra base material, and it's the exact same uh, material they've been using on a lot of their printers like the Ender 3 V2, but 
I actually quite like that build surface. It, I would say that to me, powder coated PEI on a flex plate system is a step up from that, but if I'm not gonna have that, then the whole ultra base style bed does do a really good job of adhesion and you do get really nice bottom surfaces on your parts. The bed rides up and down using V-slot wheels and two lead screws while the X and Y axis are using linear rods and bearings for motion. As far as interfacing with the printer, it takes a full size SD card and it has a touch screen to interface with that SD card, or you can connect it to something like OctoPrint with a USB cable. Both the SD card slot as well as the USB port are actually inside of the enclosure, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. If you're printing over SD card, I guess it's not that big of a deal, but if you need to route a USB, it does make it kind of awkward. You either need to have the front door all the way open or sort of figure out a way to, you know, again, get the USB from inside of the machine to outside of the machine. I think it would have made a lot more sense had they somehow extended that port to the outer frame of the printer. The D1 does have power loss recovery as well as a filament runout sensor that is mounted externally by the spool holder. As far as firmware goes, it's running Marlin and Creality did recently release the source code in October, which is always good to see per Marlin's GPL licensing. As we normally do, I did pop the hood, or in this case, the bottom of the printer, so we can take a look at the electronics. There is a ton of space down there, which is really nice. There is just the main board, as well as the power supply, which is a 24 volt Creality branded power supply. I don't know who they're having make their power supply, as it does look similar to that of a Meanwell, but I can't say definitively that it is actually a Meanwell power supply. There is also a fan mounted to the uh, inside of the case, which helps removing any heat, and if you are able to, or if you want to, there is plenty of space to install something like a Raspberry Pi, should you want to upgrade this to Clipper, or again, run something like Octoprint, if you can figure out a way to, again, get the USB from the bottom inside to that USB port. There are also breakout boards on both sides of the printer near the top back of the enclosure, which should make replacing parts easier than having to access the bottom of the printer, since again, this is a heavy machine. If you have to tilt it back to run a thermistor or heater cartridge all the way down to the bottom, it is not gonna be all that fun. So I do like that they have breakout boards inside of the printer. The package did arrive pretty beat up and it had me worried at first. I took some photos and sent them to Crowdy to at least just show them and you know see if they can figure out what happened or maybe keep track of that and figure out if they need to improve on their packaging. But once I opened up the box, everything was surrounded in foam and there was no actual damage to the printer itself. As far as assembling the D1, it's definitely a bit more involved than something like the Ender 3. Uh, you're, you're pretty much going to be taking the bottom panel, attaching the four sides, as well as all the little plastic corner pieces, the bed, the top, and then the acrylic on the outside. And it's even with me making a mistake, which was the pillars, I didn't realize that some of them were slightly different than the other ones, so I had to actually take two of them off and swap their place. But even with that and recording a lot of the process, it was only about an hour long. So it's still not a very terrible assembly. One thing I did notice when assembling the D1 right away was that there is absolutely no strain relief on the bed. The the power going to the bed as well as the thermistor is just sort of capped on taped in place. And granted, unlike a bed slinger printer like the Ender 3 where the bed is whipping back and forth, there's not nearly as much motion since it's just slowly riding up and down, but I still don't really think that's acceptable. I let them know early on that they should have some sort of strain relief. So that was something I saw right away that I did not like. And I do think that anyone that does end up getting one of these or has one of these printers should definitely consider printing out something or, or, or sort of, you know, rigging it a little bit better where the cables aren't just being held on by tape. Once I had the printer assembled, I went ahead and powered it on, homed everything, and did a quick bed leveling. It does use manual bed leveling using these same sort of four knobs that pretty much all of the Creality printers that don't have auto bed leveling use. And then it was ready to do some printing. So I preheated the hot end, loaded up some filament, and the filament feed path from the side of the printer into the uh, filament runout sensor and then it goes into this little bearing thing is kind of strange. So it feeds through this little bearing on the corner of the printer, and then it goes back out in the open through a little bit of PTFE and then into the hot end. And the thing I don't really like about it is that the bearing in the corner actually creates a bit of drag. And although it didn't seem to affect any of my prints, it didn't cause any skip steps or anything like that. It just seems strange to me when I think that just having a long Bowden tube going from the filament runout sensor to the extruder would have made a lot more sense and that's what a lot of other printers have used so again it, it's kind of like nitpicky but i just didn't really think it made a whole lot of sense and i think that they could have done a better job with the filament routing after loading the filament i popped in the included sd card to see if there was anything on there that i could just go ahead and print and it seemed blank the printer didn't see anything at all so 
I threw it into the computer and discovered that there was indeed a couple of sliced files. However, they were all inside subfolders and this machine cannot see folders. So I saw a cup model that said 6H which, or 9H, which I thought stood for nine hours that looked pretty crazy. I thought it would make for a really good first print slash retraction stress test to see just how well it would handle. So I dragged it to the root of the card and I hit print. The print turned out great and honestly, I was very impressed with the quality it was able to achieve considering that there was thousands of very small travel movements as well as thousands of retractions to complete that little part. Looking very closely, there's definitely a little bit of micro stringing, but still considering what the model was, I thought that the printer did a great job. Now that that was out of the way, I was ready to slice up some of the models that I wanted to print out. And so on the SD card, they actually do include a Creality version of Cura, which is essentially Cura 4 point something that has profiles for the Sir Moon. And so all the printing I did was between a combination of that as well as the profile that was built into Prusa Slicer. Now at the time of me recording this and at the time of testing, that profile does say beta. However, I did a lot of printing with that and I gotta say that the quality I was getting with the Prusa Slicer beta profile was at least equally on par to the one that was in the Creality Cura. So I give it thumbs up and if you prefer to use Prusa Slicer, I say go for using the D1 profile because it seems really solid. I was in need of another hardware organizer for the Voron 0.1 build. I finished the first one that's up here and I just finished the second one, but I did need a uh, one of my little hardware organizers. So I loaded up 20 trays, which was a pretty good chunk of the build plate and I hit print and it, it ran into issues. Basically the trays are the tray, the bottom of the trays, I had them up in the air, which means that the printer has to do some pretty, not crazy, but a, a decent amount of bridging. And on the first time I printed them, I printed them on the BQB1 and it had no problem doing the bridging. Well, that was not the case with the Sir Moon. It actually had the filament sagging down and I lost the entire batch of those parts. And so I believe it's due to the fact that the cooling on the Sir Moon printer is okay, but it's not great. It could definitely be better, especially if you're trying to do, again, some intense bridging like that. So the first batch failed. I was really bummed out, but I flipped all the trays over and printed them again, and it had no problem. The trays all turned out great, and they were perfect for the build that, again, I just completed. Next, I printed out a Mandalorian armor shoulder piece, and I actually showed it off in a previous video. It was a roughly 16-hour print that was pretty decent size, required supports, and the uh, Sir Moon did a fantastic job of printing that. And it was sort of around this time they started to realize that my Sir Moon was doing some funky stuff. And basically, when the print jobs were done and the bed lowers, kind of sporadically, the right side lowered a little bit, la or a little bit more than the left side. And I wasn't able to determine whether it was actually the motor turning or if it was once the motors actually stopped and it was just kind of hanging there, the right side was going down more than the left. And I reached out to Creality. They did try. They gave me some suggestions regarding the motors and they gave me some suggestions regarding the lead screws, but I, I couldn't get, I still couldn't figure it out. It was kind of sporadic and it seems like the more I'm printing, the, the less it's happening. Like now it's every three prints instead of like every other, but it definitely throughout this whole testing process was a big pain because adhesion was always something I was trying to juggle and I constantly had to on the fly adjust the bed to make sure that the first layer was, was adequate. Aside from those bed issues, the print quality on the D1 was actually pretty impressive and I did throw some fairly complicated models at it. I'll place links down below to the ones I've already mentioned and all the ones I'm mentioning now. So that way if you see a cool model and you wanna go ahead and check it out or print it out for yourself, you can go ahead and do so. I printed out the Hot Mix Torture Toaster, which has been on my list for a long time. It works pretty well, but because of that bed issue, one of the toast mechanisms broke off and the tolerances on the side were not great. The door latches and gears work great and I will definitely be printing this one again. I printed out the print in place vise from 3D Printing World, which turned out absolutely perfect. Since the footprint isn't huge, the bed proved to not be an issue. And once I got it off, the tolerances were perfect and it worked exactly like it should. I also printed out a couple of jets that are also print in place and I've had them on my list for a while. I was super pleased with the results. They have built in supports for the wings that you snap off and then the wings can open and close. Definitely these models are very unique. And again, like I said, if you want to print them out, I will have those links down below. I went ahead and printed out a star vase from 3D Print Bunny in vase mode. It has these sort of built in loops where the print head purposefully goes off of the 
printed layer and it sort of creates these uniform loops that just look really, really unique. And she's kind of a wizard with her 3D modeling skills. She's done a ton of just very unique, cool looking models. So if you just want to check out her work too, I will place links in the description, but the star vase turned out awesome. And I definitely need to also print out some more of her models. Being that it does have a direct drive extruder, I wanted to play around or at least test out some TPU. And the results that I got were pretty hit or miss. And I think it's primarily due to the fact that the extruder on it isn't exactly that great. It is a single geared extruder, and I wouldn't say that it has the most constraint uh, filament path. And so there was a couple of times at the beginning when I was trying to print somewhat quickly or just printing where it actually clogged similar to what, what has happened in the past for me with a lot of the different Creality Bowden type setups. So once I did sort of babysit it and make sure it was going correctly, I was able to get it to print a six hour uh, Voodoo model from Chaos Cortex. It's this Voodoo doll that kind of now feels like a uh, stress, stress Voodoo doll, but it can print in TPU, but again, I wouldn't say it's excellent at printing in TPU. You will, you will certainly want to go at fairly conservative speeds. <laughs> so first let's talk about the things that I do like about the D1 and certainly the construction. I, I would argue it's probably overkill for the style of machine that it is, but that 40, whatever, 41, 42 pounds of weight is the aluminum extrusions all around this thing. I mean, moving this thing kind of sucks, but it is, it is definitely built like a tank. They did not cheap out as far as the materials, you know, the aluminum that they used all over this thing. And Honestly, with how stiff and rigid the frame is, I really wish that they had made this a Core XY printer. I just think that it sort of would have been an awesome thing, but again, they didn't. However, um, once more, the frame is awesome. I just, like I said, wish they had a top enclosure as well. Uh, I also do like the fact that they went with a direct drive extruder. Like I said, is it the best? Absolutely not. But to me, it's certainly a step in the right direction. And, and I think I previously mentioned it, but in my video I did on direct drive versus Bowden extruders, the comments and feedback I've gotten or the general consensus is that it seems typically direct drive is preferred by the majority of people over a Bowden setup. And of course it has things like a 32-bit controller board, silent drivers, filament runout sensor, power loss recovery. However, all those things have sort of become more and more of a standard, so they're a little bit less impressive than you know, a year or two ago. On the other side, there are quite a few things that I think can be improved upon. Like I mentioned, the filament uh, feeding gear system is just very odd to me. The fact that the bed has no strain relief definitely needs to be fixed. Uh, I didn't mention it, but there is a gap in the front door that's sort of large. It doesn't really matter all that much since they don't have plans to increase or, or, or release a top cover for this. But like I said, I just think that had this printer just come with a top cover, it, it would have certainly gotten a few more points to me because it's like, cool, all of a sudden I've got this printer that I could just throw ABS on. It's already enclosed. But, you know, again, I, I don't know why that call was made and why they decided not to do that, but I'm certainly disappointed with that decision. And of course, for me, one of the biggest things is the issue with the bed. And I did a little bit of digging in terms of seeing if this was an isolated issue or if this is something that's known on D1s from other people that tested it and I didn't really see much on it. So all I can base my review off of is this specific machine right here and that was the that was the experience that I had and you know, if they had somehow incorporated a belt system, like I've seen on quite a few Prusa style machines where, you know, it's got dual Z rods and they're connected via a belt. So once the gantry, uh, or in this instance, the bed is aligned, if one turns, the other one always turns. So they can't turn independently from each other. And, you know, again, maybe this is just an isolated incident, but that would have been something they could have done maybe below the frame. And that would have ensured that that never happened. So that was something super disappointing. And again, quite frustrating every single print having to, well, almost every print having to adjust one lead screw or adjust the bed when I just leveled it the print before. With that being said, I do feel like the D1 or a D1 style machine from Creality does have potential, but it just isn't there. And if they do fix those things, I really do think they'd have a very solid ABS machine. But for me, the D1 in its current state is really just a swing and a miss. And I did happen to see recently that Creality announced a few more machines. I think there's like another Ender 3 coming out that's got direct drive and auto bed leveling from factory. And I, I swore that there was a, another Sermoon in the family that's coming out. I don't know if it's a replacement or not. And this isn't confirmed. I can't remember where I saw it, but if they do release another version 
and it does correct those things that I stated, I would love to try it again because again, it is a very unique and sort of robust machine as far as the way it's built. They just, they just didn't go all the way with it. I am happy to see that Creality is trying out some new things because they have re released a ton of machines over the years that are very similar to one another. But in this instance, with the retail price on this being around 600 US dollars, you can pick up something like two and a half Ender 3 V2s or two Ender 3 V2s in a pack of different filaments. That is definitely the direction I would go over something like the Sir Moon. And like I said, I do have the Ender 7 and based off what I'm seeing, it definitely looks promising. The fact that it is a Core XY, it does have linear rails. I am excited to test it out. So again, I'm really hoping that it is a little less disappointing than what my experience has been with the D1. And that has been the Creality Sir Moon D1. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I I like to think of myself as a fairly optimistic reviewer and I always try to look on the positives more so than focusing on the negatives. But honestly, with this printer, there just was so many little things that were oversights that it just sort of seems to me like it was rushed out and it wasn't fully thought through. And so I, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to not point out all of these things. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you guys have any um, feedback or recommendations as well. Again, I, I throughout this process, because it has been many months, I did give them some feedback regarding, like I said, the packaging, the thing going on with the lead screw, the fact that the strain relief is ridiculous and uh, that's the, or lack of strain relief, and that it should have a top enclosure. But if, if I see that there is quite a few of similar requests, I'm more than happy to pass that along. Creality in the past has definitely taken some community feedback and implemented that into their products. And so I'd like to think that with this new or current generation of printers that they will uh, very likely do the same. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from Monbot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.